All right, welcome back to the program. It's time for us to uh, dig in into uh, the interview uh, segment. My guest is joining me right now virtually. He is the president and chairman of Council Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, Olatunde Amolegbe. Good morning to you, sir. Happy July. Happy second half, 2021. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, let's dig in. The half time whistle blew uh, overnight at <laughs> 12 a.m. Uh, talking yeah. about the Nigerian stock market, I did a brief analysis earlier uh, mm -hmm. uh, over, over there at the wall. And uh, if we take a look at those numbers, can you help my uh, viewers characterize what we've seen uh, so far to understand the performance of the Nigerian stock market in the first half? And I must tell our viewers that you are the Ogafata Quarter of stockbrokers in Nigeria, in case they don't understand that. <laughs> you are the Ogafata yeah. Quarter of those that wear, you know, that uniform. So welcome yeah. again yeah. to you, sir. Um, Thank you. Characterize for me what we've seen so far. Okay. Um, the first half of um, 2021 has been a bit of a roller coaster in the Nigerian stock market, apparently, um, obviously. Uh, we started the year on a high. Um, the index was up at the very beginning of the year, uh, up to the for, up to the to the end of the first quarter, and I believe that uh, was a continuation of the bullishness we saw uh, towards the end of 2020. As um, I will remember, your, I will remind your mm -hmm. remind your mind your viewers. You know, Nigeria, actual Nigerian stock market actually ended the year 2020 as the best performing stock market um, worldwide. So we saw that uh, continuation at the early part of the year, but um, uh, a combination of um, uh, a few factors uh, led to a correction, which we saw uh, started happening uh, towards March, April, and uh, up to the end of um, June. Um, some of the factors include the fact that, um, you know, inflation uh, in the environment started to spike. Uh, uh, we started seeing the exits of some um, foreign investors on the market. And then um, the, the result of that was that um, the relatively low um, interest, rate, uh, interest rate regime we had in the fixed income market started to reverse. So interest rates started going up. Uh, investors gradually started moving away from equities and then um, that led to uh, price um, price correction, and um, uh, we've ended June, June now in um, relatively negative um, territory. So, really, that is where we are at the moment. I like that you brought up the issue of 2020 and how the Nigerian exchange performed in 2020, the second best, in fact, with over a 50 percent gain. And I was wondering at that time, I did uh, remember that I analyzed it so much on the show in uh, January. How come even in a pandemic? Uh, the Nigerian exchange posted so much positive. Uh, do you think that we, we can really achieve that kind of gain again, <laughs> six months <laughs> gone? Uh, I do not have a crystal ball, but um, uh, what I see is a situation where it's very likely that um, the market will do much better than it did in the second half of the year than what we've seen for the first quarter because um, some of those issues that have um, led to this um, this correction we've seen uh, are starting to sort themselves out. Um, we are seeing interest rates becoming stable in the fixed income environment. Uh, we are seeing a situation where uh, hopefully the security solution, uh, security situation, and um, some other some other circumstances that could have led the foreign investors to exit our market are starting to sort themselves out. So hopefully some of them will start you know, finding their way back into our markets in the, in the second half. Plus the fact that, you know, the truth is some of the corporate results we've seen uh, so far has been uh, quite encouraging. Hopefully those co corporate results will also spark, a, um, a, 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 a spark in investors' interest again. So I think we will do much better in the, in the, second, in the second half of the year than what we've seen in the um, in the first in the first half, whether we will get to the height we got to in 2020, like I said, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't say. Mm, because anything can happen in the market. Anything can happen Absolutely. that can Absolutely. actually drive the market either way. 
Um, can you talk to me about some specifics that perhaps we can attribute to the performance of uh, a loss of about 6.5% for the first half of mm. uh, this year? W what were the key highlights for, uh, for you and for y your colleagues in the market in the first half of this year? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, the main driver really is the fact that towards the end of 2020, we saw uh, the CBN um, uh, adopt a, an approach of relatively lax monetary policy. Fixed income yields came down significantly to as low as about 2.5%, 3% towards the end of 2020. And uh, that encouraged people to move towards the equities market. Now, at the very beginning, at, at the beginning of, the, uh, of 2021, Increase in inflation and a, a few other policy changes led to a situation where we saw a, uh, a, a sharp spike in, in um, fixed income yield. All right. And naturally, investors will, will migrate from you know, the equities market to try and get the higher yield that is obtainable in the fixed income market. And that is what really has, um, that's one of the main factors that have led to this um, correction in, in equity prices we've seen. That has stabilized now. I think that uh, going forward, um, uh, we will see you know uh, the market actually operating properly the way it's, it's supposed to be, rather than uh, the uh, sharp gyration we've seen um, in the first half of the year. Mm, I like what you said, gyration, because we've seen the market mm. really gyrating. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look at the inflation numbers, uh, uh, about 17.93 percent in May, vis-a-vis -vis the NPR at 11.5. The question to you right now is that what should uh, an investor's basket look like right now vis-a-vis uh, -vis inflation, high inflation, and negative return on investment? So what options are available? Uh, I mean, um, it's, it's important that um, investors ensure that they are close to their stockbrokers, their financial investors, especially in a period in periods like this because um if you look at the broad market and uh, it's showing you a negative six percent and in inflation is in, is in the range of um 17 percent plus uh typically you know uh, it's, it's it's easy to assume that any investor any investor in the equities market uh will be looking at um negative rate of returns but the truth is that the broad index does not necessarily tell the whole story. The truth is that even while the broad index is showing a negative return, you will see specific stocks, specific investment, uh, for, uh, uh, specific securities that have shown very positive returns. Even within this period we're talking about, we have securities that have shown, you know, uh, price increases, price appreciation, uh, tops of 20%. All right, but you will only you as an investor will only be able to um, identify those securities and be able to, you know, uh, invest in those securities if you are close to your stockbroker, if you are able to get good and invest in investment advice and good recommendations, and you know, be able to structure your portfolio in such a way that even if the broad market isn't doing as 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 um, as expected, your own portfolio uh, will be, will will do uh, will do much better and. As I said, it's, there's clearly um, empirical evidence to the fact that equities, uh, you know, appears to do much better in an high inflation environment than um, possibly other asset classes. So um, I will assume that, you know, a, a portfolio that is made up more of equities at a time like this is likely to, has a better chance of um, at, at performing inflation than possibly, um, you know, a, a portfolio that is skewed towards other asset classes. What I can get from what you have said, definitely even though the broad index may not be doing as well as we expect, you can do some cherry picking with the advice of your stockbroker or your financial advisor to be able to beat Absolutely. inflation. So I hope that my viewers have gotten that investment tip because whether in the market, you can invest across terms. If you take a look at the Nigerian market too, we've seen a domination of local investors since we've seen 
an exodus of foreign investors. Um, what do you think would bring these guys back, the foreign portfolio investors as well as foreign direct investors? Okay. For a lot of the invest, a lot of foreign investors, I will assume, exited the market when fixed income yield came down drastically. Because obviously foreign investors, foreign, foreign portfolio investors especially, uh, are seeking alpha. And uh, I will remind your, your viewers that they are not only invested in Nigeria, they are invested across uh, global markets. So they will always seek um, uh, environments that um, will, um, uh, will, will deliver good returns to them. So our fixed income uh, yield coming down, you know, probably indicates to them that they could you know, look for other other markets within the, within our sphere, especially for the frontier investors within our sphere where they can get uh, you know uh, get better yield. Now that we have seen the situation where yields have gone up and um, uh, the market itself is stabilizing, our environment generally, uh, in terms of our our social political environment, is also becoming stable. It's very likely that. This, um, these investors are, are likely to, to, to start coming back in. Uh, the literature that I've read, the advisories I've read, indicates generally that our, our market is cheap. And uh, you will assume that um, investors will want to invest in, uh, in a market that has a you know, prospect for growth. So I think that um, all things being equal, as we approach the second half of the year, some of those uh, foreign investors will um, will start taking a second look at our markets again. Mm. Let's talk about this common saying, which I've always known now for many years. Oh, the stock market is a barometer of the economy. Some yes. would agree, some would disagree. Let's just oppose it with what happened last year, for example. During a pandemic, we suffered a lockdown. Many Nigerians were at home. Many Nigerians lo lost their jobs. Unemployment, 33.3% poverty at almost to speak and the stock market did a gain of 50 percent i can't phantom it so why would you tell me that the stock market is a barometer of the economy is it that capitalists are just making money because we even saw a lot more billionaires last year even the yeah. billionaires added more to their fortune so is the stock market which you play in a, is a, a good barometer for the economy um i Yes, generally, uh, it's, um, the stock market is supposed to be the barometer of the economy, and um, and this is true for most um, most developed economies. Uh, I, I will try to I will try and make a bit of this, this, um, a, a bit of um, uh, difference here. For the developed economies, uh, at least the capitalist economies most of their big companies, most of their big corporations are actually listed and quoted in the stock market. And the stock market being, the, being a, um, a, a forward pricing mechanism, uh, whatever policies, either monetary or otherwise, that the government puts in place, the stock market tends to price it, price it into the stocks of those corporates ahead of those policies actually taking effect. All right. So the pricing of those of the of the policies into the price of those stocks indicates whether the policies is going to be well received or otherwise. And then the stock market will move up and down as the case may be. All right. And that is why it is called the, 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 the barometer of the economy. Now, for our markets, unfortunately, uh, we have not gotten to the point where uh, the bulk of our major corporations are actually listed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, if you look at an, indices, an, indice, an index like um, the market capitalization to the GDP uh, mm -hmm. for, for a lot of developed uh, economies, is well over 100%. For Nigeria, we are still hovering in the region of 13% or thereabout, which means that a lot of the corporations, a lot of the companies that could possibly have been, have been listed, that will ensure that whenever there is a policy, uh, or in circumstances that could affect the economy, the stock market is able to price those circumstances into the price of these corporations and reflect upward or down, down movements 
to indicate whether those policies or those circumstances is going to is going to be good for the economy or not most of those companies are not are not listed right now so uh, nigerian the nigerian market and the nigerian the nigerian stock market will fulfill its um its um its um its function as a as a bar barometer of the economy as we see more more of these bigger let, uh, bigger companies become listed and they are pressed uh, ap appropriately so this is the distinction distinction i will make so for the developed economies clearly the, the stock market is the, bar is the barometer of the economy because it reflects policy uh, you know as they are coming out even before those policies act uh, policies actually take effect that might not necessarily be true for for the nigerian mm. for the nigerian stock market at the moment but we are hoping that in the, in the, in the short term we will be able to get there as um, as more companies you know seek um, quotation on our market has your community recovered from the 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 wilt and from uh, what happened years ago also from the recession that we've seen in the last uh, we saw a recession in 2016 or we suffered not see because we all experienced that 2016 we also entered the recession last year we came out of it has, has the community really recovered uh, from from that what i mean in terms of stock, the stock broking community and stock brokers some of your colleagues also left the profession for a bit went to start practicing something else i don't know if some mm -hmm. of them are back i also do know that there are a lot of people in your community that made money last year i have a lot of friends <laughs> amongst you that made a lot of money so how do you just oppose that um the truth is that the, the um 2007 2008 global financial meant down affected everybody but it affected our community uh particularly strong, strongly because i mean uh, we had a situation where i would say that the regulatory and um, uh, the regulatory environment was not what it was supposed to be so we had a situation where uh, lots of uh, people within our community actually, you know, uh, lost their capital and um, some couldn't come back. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm glad about is that in the last few years, uh, with the new management of the, of, the, of the stock exchange, we've had stronger, you know, regulatory uh, systems put in place, both for the operators and the exchange itself. And um, so uh, those of us, uh, those of uh, those players that are able to meet those um, uh, conditions, uh, you know, remain in the market. Others that exited are able to uh, comply with those conditions I, and they are coming back and while others, um, you know, go ahead and do something else. But, um, you know, the focus really is, is, is keep the system stable other than, you know, just uh, uh, cut out to um, uh, you know uh, people's feelings. It is the system is more important than um, than than uh, individuals, if you will. And um, I think that um, the present management of uh, the stock exchange have been able to actually stabilize the system, and um, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Now that takes me to the issue of the demutualization of the exchange, which we've seen concluded. That is why we have the three facets. Now it's not more the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the Nigerian Exchange Limited, NGX Group, which Oskonima is the head, then the real estate arm of this. How can your community or how can stock brokers take advantage of this new market structure if they haven't started taking advantage of it? If they have started, speak to me about that. All right. Now the the business of stock broking had um, never been about just equity dealers. Uh, Stockbrokers were not trained to just be equity dealers. Unfortunately, we've had uh, the, the perception out there that you know stockbrokers are just all about equities. Stockbrokers were trained to train in all securities. They are in they are securities and investment experts. So uh, they're supposed to be able to trade in fixed income, trade in, in financial derivatives trading uh, commodities and all other um, securitized assets. Uh, what we've not seen up till now is, um, is uh, you know, active trading in all those other asset classes. What I, what I see happening is that with demercialization, the NGX is likely to be uh, more active in bringing in 
some of these other asset classes into active trading. And our members will be able to participate in those trading and be able to hopefully make more income doing, doing, doing so. Because they already have the training, they already have the know-how, and um, you know, the demutualization should enable uh, the NGX, you know, activate those. Um, we already see quite a bit of fixed income trading going on, uh, trading in exchange traded funds. I know that, you know, uh, bringing on board derivatives is also at, um, at, the, uh, at the final stages. So as those, as those asset classes come in, our members are able to trade on them and they are able to bring the advantages those asset classes brings to invest investors portfolio to the benefit of the investors. So this for me um, is, the, is, the, is, the, is what I say as one of the biggest advantages that uh, one of the biggest immediate advantages that um, you know, demercialization is likely to offer not only to, to the stockbroking community, but to the investing community as, uh, at large. That brings me now to the question of if there is like, uh, will I call it a program or an, an initiative to attract perhaps new investors and also keep the current ones? And I know you would have been speaking to your clients since the demercialization started. Do your clients have a sense of what has happened at the Nigerian exchange and perhaps w w what are their sentiments towards that? Firstly, we have a situation where there's an, there's a, there's an imme immediate um, advantage they are able to take and a lot of them are already taken, which is the fact that not only are they trading stocks on the stock exchange, they can actually buy shares on the stock exchange itself. So for those of us that feel that, you know, um, uh, the stock exchange represents good investment, they are able to actually invest in, in, in the stock exchange shares themselves. And we've seen quite a, a handful of client, a handful of investors taking that advantage. Uh, secondly, they do realize that there are portfolios that either to used to be dominated by equities that expose them, all of them, irrespective of the sort of clients they are, expose them to uh, all the risks that uh, equity and a 100% equity portfolio might present, now have the chance to be diversified into other asset classes. So, you know, uh, in a situation where uh, interest rates were to rise, they are able to switch quickly from equities to fixed income. And if, if um, interest rates were to, were, to, were to fall, they are also able to switch back. Uh, that really isn't an, um, an opportunity that is available to most of them, say, 10, 15 years ago. All right, that is easy to do now. And most of our clients are able to take advantage of that. With the advent of derivatives, they will even be able to now edge those investments, edge those, those um, risks that, that might be inherent in the portfolio they have. And so uh, I, I think that um, uh, the advent of demercialization really, really presents um, uh, uh, some great good for the, for the, for the, uh, for the investors in, in this market. Let's talk about your institute a bit because I know that uh, you are also spearheading the Chartered uh, Institute of Securities and uh, Investment Deal. Uh, give us like a background on what's happening so far. Is there any updates and why that bill is necessary? Yeah. Now, um, the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers was established by an act of, act of parliament that is um, uh, Act 105 of 1992. Now, when that uh, act was passed, the business of stockbroking uh, was dominated by equity trading, really. And, um, but that act also captures that everybody that the CIS is going to be, uh, every professional the CIS is going to satisfy, certify is going to be able to participate in securities and investment management. All right, so that act captures that, but it probably did not capture it in the sort of details it requires, because that act covers where the market was and where the Nigerian uh, securities business was in the, in in uh, in Nigeria at the time. It it is imperative now because nothing nothing stays uh, constant anyway. Change is the only thing that's a constant. What is happening now that is that the market itself has changed significantly. When the when Act 102, when when Act, Act 105 was passed, we had only one uh, one exchange in, in in Nigeria. 
Right now, we have about five exchanges, and there are some other some other are still coming uh, coming on the pipe on the pipeline. And we have multiple assets being traded on on this um, on these exchanges, and these assets are being traded by uh, by professionals. Now, the CIS Act empowers the CIS to certify all professionals in securities and investments in the country. We thought it was important that we bring forward an, an amendment to that bill in the form of the CC bill we are, we are, we are sponsoring, sponsoring at, the, um, at the National Assembly in order to, uh, to broaden the coverage of, of, the CC, of, the, of the CIS bill as it's actually intended when it was actually passed to ensure that it covers everybody that is, doing, that is practicing the business of securities and investment in the country. So either you are either you are trading in securities and in, in equities or you're trading in fixed income or commodities or any other securities. We want to ensure that the, 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 uh, your, the certification you get actually emanates from, uh, mm. from, the, from the CIS. And quite frankly, this will protect investors. Okay. Uh, and, you know, so if that's, that's really the reason why we're, we're, we're doing Since this. Since you've talked about certification, let, and let, let me ask a question around that, talking about the reviewing of the examination process, because for anyone to even be a chartered stockbroker, you must take exams. So speak to me about the review of the examination process. Also speak to me about, I do know that there's a scholarship scheme from your institute to capital market correspondents. I uh, would like you to speak to me about that concerning the diploma program. Uh, because we have about uh, less than about six minutes to go so let me just jam you with all the three questions uh, before <laughs> we go then uh, you know i would also like to know how your community tends uh, would attract new or young people the young people into your profession because i remember when i used to okay i still cover the market now it's just that i do it from afar when i was at the plot okay. the nigerian stock exchange years ago Many of you that were stockbrokers at that time were like old, you know, not really young people. I'm not berating the profession, but I'm trying to go somewhere that how can you attract younger people, the Generation Z, the millennials, the perhaps Generation Y, all these generation acronyms they have now. So how can you uh, attract that? So I hope you, um, you have an idea of the questions I've asked. If you yeah. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so to your, to your first, thank you, uh, Nancy, for those questions. To your first question, um, the truth is that for you to be a, a stockbroker practicing in Nigeria today, you need to do all our exams and become an omnibus, omnibus stockbroker. By an by an omnibus stockbroker, what we mean is that you are able to um, carry out activities on all the exchanges. And you are able to practice all the functions that is um, attrib attributable to that. But we do realize that um, uh, the world is changing. The world is moving more towards specialization uh, rather than have you know uh, omnibus uh, qualification. So what we have done at the at the, at the CIS actually is that is to now bring another level of of qualification that will enable. Uh, students to actually now specialize in various areas uh, of the of the profession. So um, uh, as a student, you, you believe your interest is more in fixed income trading. Uh, you're able to we're able to train you and you're able to take the exams and qualify as a fixed income trader. You, your interest is in uh, financial planning, for instance. We're able to train you to take exams and you specialize in that. Your interest is in um, is investment management, for instance. You can take the exam for that. So at the end of the day, what you're going to see uh, in the next uh, few years is that the institute will now, aside from producing ominous, omnibus stock brokers such as myself, you will also have uh, students that are qualified as um, as su subject matter experts. All right. So. Um, you want to talk to someone about the equities market, you can actually approach an, a, a subject matter expert in equities, equities uh, trading. You want to talk about fixed income, you can talk to a qualified, certified subject matter expert in that field. 
All right, so that is, that is um, where we're going to go with, uh, well, that's where we're going with our uh, uh, specialized uh, membership um, program. On the um, diploma program, actually what that serves is that we want, uh, we believe that um, the knowledge about investment without, about securities trading, so we actually start from the very, uh, from the very beginning. So we want a situation where our graduates, our young graduates that are still uh, are undergraduates that are still in school, we want them to be able to gain the knowledge of the capital market, which is the reason why we are uh, instituted the diploma pro program. So while they are still in the university, they can actually start taking the diploma program such that when they, by the time they finish university, they have finished the diploma program and gotten that certificate and that will ex exempt them from some some levels of the uh, of the final exams that they, that they will they will be taking, and then you know um, acing their uh, their final qualification to become uh, securities and investment uh, expert. So these two programs will ultimately shorten the time it will take for anybody to be able to uh, ultimately become uh, a charter stock broker or okay. a securities and investment expert, as the case may be. Okay. Um, how are we, how are we um, attracting generation, generation Z and generation um, uh, Y, as the case may be? We are continually engaging various institutions, various schools. We have a, a, uh, an essay competition that we have instituted about 10 years ago uh, that um, you know, enables um, secondary school students you know, to, to tell us a little bit about what they know about the capital market. And we bring them in every now and then for, next, for lectures they come here for for um, for excursions, and we are continually talking to um, various universities. As it, as it were now, uh, there are a few few universities we are having discussions with, with the mind of having them actually establish programs mm. that will award the degree of BSc Securities and Investments at okay. the end of the day for graduates that are interested in this. Uh, in this profession. So soon enough, you will see uh, some universities, okay. you know, announcing the establ uh, uh, establishment of um, under undergraduate programs that will award the degree of BSc in uh, securities and investment. And some will also establish degree, postgraduate, postgraduate okay. degrees that will award um, MSc in securities and investment. Okay. So we're doing a, quite a bit in um, engaging with the, with the younger generation. Okay. I think we'll leave it at that. We've had an extensive conversation uh, this morning. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Hope to speak to you sometime soon. I've been speaking with uh, Olatude Amolegbe, who is uh, the president and chairman of Cancel Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. All right, that's the much we can take on, on today's edition of the program. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Please join us again tomorrow for another edition with uh, me. Be the best you can be and be the change you want to see. I am Nancy Nigel.